Hey, fossilized human. How's it going? I am uh, made some adjustments. I've got a new microphone, so I was just going to spend a little bit of time tonight testing it. Uh, hopefully it's working. It seems to be registering in OBS anyway. And I um, also played around a little bit with my camera settings. Um, I realized that when I was streaming before, um, the quality of the image coming out of my camera it's not quite where I could put it if I wanted to and still have it look pretty good I think so um, just played around with it a little bit to try to see hey Qu Quiglius and uh, Sarah hello it's nice to catch you at the uh, graduation there Sarah I don't think you saw me sitting in the audience in the uh, in the faculty audience, but um, it's kind of cool to get to watch you walk across the stage. So that was neat. I'm just uh, looking around a little bit in my sample. There's a rotifer that wants me to take its picture, apparently. Oh, it wants to take off. Just wants to keep taking off. I tried to high five you, it didn't work out too well. Um, Sarah, hello. Welcome to the other Sarah. 
let's say a cat sneezed and I happened to get it pretty much sterile on a slide. What magnification? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm probably the lowest magnification uh, is where I would start. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure about cat sneezes, uh, about what you want to do with that. <laughs> Yeah, I was in your stream there, Joe. I was like, well, I'm starting, but I didn't want to like, you know, campaign for for you to to uh, to raid me because I feel like that's cheesy. I wanted you to go where you wanted to go. Um, I suppose I could have told you I was going to start soon, but I don't know. I've got my own crowd. It's fine. Uh, there's a little nematode worm. Well, it's a rather big nematode worm, actually. Uh, let me see if I can adjust this image just a little bit. Uh, because I'm 80% of the way to sending you that for the SEM and just, like, find everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's Sarah. Um, uh, Sarah Lasaurus is a, uh, a PhD student in our at our university, so... Um, this nematode's really kind of squirmy. They always are. I'm not sure I'll be able to get... You can see it's been eating something golden in here. Hey, studio. Welcome in. Yeah, giant nematode. Yeah, Dr. Sarah Lasaurus. I mean, she's already had her doctorate for, I don't know, two months now or something. A month now. But uh, officially, you know, the official walking across the stage and getting the uh, not the not degree certification. There's a big. That's a big uh, alligator worm. Oof, oof. Yeah. The ceremony, that's all we did, yeah. That's too many Sarahs in the channel right now. All right, so, <clears throat> sorry, hopefully the sound is good. This is my, my new microphone. And so it should be maybe a little bit clearer. Uh, I played around with the settings for it for a little bit, but not exhaustively since I just got it today. I find where that worm went. Seems like a little too big to just disappear. Um, and then I can actually I can play with these settings just a little bit here. Yeah. Darken them. Sounds clear and good. Okay, good, good, good. Um, I'm happy about that. Uh, I I mostly got it for well for a couple reasons. One, I've um, just been using this sort of janky, well, it's not janky, it's like a $40 microphone that we got um, for recording lectures and stuff when we sort of hit COVID a couple of years ago. And um, I've been using it for for streaming as well. Um, there's a bunch of Vorticella in there. Everything's in the middle of a pile of junk, so I'm going to try to move around the outside edge here. Um, and then um, <laughs> there's a board of seller caught in the uh, in the whirlwind there. Um, so we um, so I thought, oh, it's probably time I should probably like upgrade to a real microphone, and. Um, Uh, also, I think it's got better sort of noise canceling stuff for like it's it's got uh, better control over sort of um, how you want the setting for sound to go. So I can set it up when it's outside and I'm doing bird streams so that it's surrounding like surround sound like it, it gets everything from every direction. And then um, hey, hey, Commander Shiffard. Um, and then 
when it's um, when I'm in the SCM room, I can set it up so that the um, the microphone has a very narrow sort of field of sound, and um, I'm looking forward to that because I think it might actually cut down on some of the surrounding noise. And then I also got like a little covery thing for it. Um, uh, it's just the Yeti, uh, whatever the X, the top one from Yeti is. So you get the blue Yeti X. So uh, since I'm not singing into it or anything like that. Uh, are they bioluminescent? No. Um, I've just been playing with the camera settings a little bit um, as well. So everything in here is blue, a little bluer than usual, um, just from uh, contrast settings that I put on it um, in the camera, not in the actual microscope. Everything in the microscope is always a little bit clearer than it is for you guys. So um, on my end, it's it looks very good. And then uh, on stream, it's a sort of different picture. So also, I think that there's a little bit of water on my objective as well. So hang on a second. I'll switch out to the, uh, the 10x. Just some vorticella. <laughs> some of us study liberal arts. Um, yeah, it's a pretty little landscape. Um, I can also, when I switch to the uh, 10x, I can pull this contrast up a little bit harder, actually. Um, Uh, so anyways, I, I was, uh, it'll have a narrower little window for, um, for what it'll record. And I think that might actually be very helpful, um, for, uh, for the SCM lab to try to cut down on the pump, the vacuum pump noise. So, Hey, Dr. N, how's it going? We're just looking at uh, a little pond sample today from my backyard. And I just am working on testing out some uh, microphone settings and uh, playing around a little bit with my camera settings to try to improve the, I picked a different uh, sort of speed and resolution. Um, what is that thing? The thing that's in here right now is a, uh, it's a Deloid rotifer. So the rotifer, um, she's a, uh, uh, a type of microscopic organism, obviously, that um, they have a fringe of cilia around their mouths, and um, they use those to um, sort of spin around in the water, and it creates gyres that pulls food towards their mouth, like a vacuum cleaner, basically. And um, you, when it starts to feed, it will pull them out. Um, the rest of the time, they're sort of like inside their head, the feeding apparatus is called Corona. It looks like maybe this one has an egg too. Um, and then it, it's kind of waving itself around um, in the, it's, it's attached. It's not attached to a stalk. That's actually like a foot with little toes. And um, the thing that you see sticking out is like a sensor. At the top, it's like an antenna, and then it has sort of a mouth uh, part that's sticking out there. It's got some personality. Um, uh, this is multicellular, yeah. They have uh, eyes and uh, internal organs and um, a digestive system. So, um, you know, uh, there are some things that are basically this size. That are single celled, but um, this particular little thingy, uh, this lady right here, is uh, multicellular. There, she's pulled out the little bristle like um, corona 
um, components right there. Let's see if I can switch the field of view so it's a little bit darker. Now you can see she's sort of spinning the water around and pulling it in towards her mouth. You can see the particles actually, if you look closely um, in front of her. Yeah, they're like little pinwheels, except for they're not actually spinning. They just look like they're spinning. They're actually going like they're doing the wave. They're just doing this, you know, and, it, and it, it's working its way around, um, but they don't actually spin. They just look like the head of a vacuum cleaner, basically. So uh, I'm going to leave this on here for a second, and then I'm going to... <laughs> terrifying. Well, if you were very little, they would be terrifying. Um, I need to get some uh, chem wipes and see if I can get the little bit of water that's on the uh, objective off so that I can switch it back to 20x if we want to look at stuff at a higher magnification. <laughs> so hang on a second. So I don't know why I'm wearing the headphones other than um, it forces the microphone to not hear my speakers um, because I, there's nothing playing through it, at least not at the moment. I think I got it. Okay. Hey, Marmot. Long time no see. How you been? And you can see her a little bit clearer now. Um, the water under the slide is kind of thick, so um, she can kind of move up and down in the water column a little bit. There's room for her to move around. So, um, Fossilized human, you can buy... Um, I'm only looking at stuff actually at about 10x, which is a really cheap um, lens on my microscope. Um, you could buy a hundred dollar microscope and um, through the eyepieces it would probably be just as good as what we're looking at here. Um, the only thing that I have that most microscopes don't is uh, differential interference contrast. So um, this is basically what it would look like in bright field um, if you if you didn't have the, the contrast settings on. Um, I can actually rotate this around to bright field. Um, that's what the bright field settings would look like. So basically, that's um, this is what it would look like in a uh, hundred dollar microscope. Basically, um, you could still see everything. Um, you know, the only issue is that um, we're kind of zoomed in um, on my camera as well. But yeah, for most, yeah, a student microscope is pretty good. Um, the optics are pretty good, and. Um, Yeah, yeah, you can definitely, and you know, this is just a, a little deloid rotifer. You can find them in practically anything. Um, they live in lichen, they live in mosses. Um, this one happens to live in my pond. Um, but um, they don't, you know, they're, they're not hard to find. Um, you can find these things basically anywhere. And um, other types of rotifers as well. Um, all kinds of amoeba are pretty easy to see at this scale. And, you know, the only reason that you might need optics like I have um, is if you wanted to publish something or if you wanted to become a streamer and you want to have a fancy microscope and showcase um, stuff with really fancy light. So, um, you know, I usually run everything through um, DIC filter, uh, which is this thing. It gives it a really strong contrast and it makes everything look three-dimensional. So... Um, but, uh, you know, you can do a lot of this stuff without, um, without having to buy a fancy microscope and you can see a lot of stuff. Um, you know, uh, I mostly just look at stuff that's in my koi pond. Um, you know, I, I went out and, and collected some samples today, but they weren't really that interesting. Um, but you know, it just depends on where you collect. You can find a lot of this sort of interesting organisms. And 
Um, if you look around in a variety of places, um, you'll find all kinds of things. So it's a little tiny rotifer. Oh, it just took off. Oh, we were raided. We're being raided by Molly, Molly Laley? Molly Laley. Let's see. Um, hello, Jippy Flip. Uh, Molly Laley, I got my birds and bees talk from a video game. Oh, you're trapped behind an ad, Molly. No problem. Uh, sorry about that. The uh, ads coming in are always kind of annoying. But um, Molly, what do you do? You were looking at... Um, you play a video game that, uh, that has birds and bees talk? Is that what happened? What does that mean? What does that mean? We watched California's dad, Huel Hauser. Did you bring them here, Chippy Flip? Are you responsible for this activity, this raiding activity? Um, welcome in, raiders. We are looking at some stuff in a light microscope. Um, in my streams, we sometimes look at stuff in a light microscope. Most of the time, I look at stuff in a scanning electron microscope. Um, occasionally, I'll use a stereo microscope. Um, I'm a ukuleleist, and I make ambient sounds over public television. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we're looking at some of my tiny friends. These are from the koi pond in my backyard. And um, I'm a paleoecologist, so my uh, day job is I'm a professor. And, uh, and then I stream for fun, mostly. Um, but we look at stuff in uh, scanning electron microscopes, light microscopes, and I also do birding streams. Um, we look at the moon. Occasionally, I will, um, I will do thunderstorm streams, streams where we're looking at uh, big thunderstorms. Oh, there's a worm here. Hello, worm. Hello, little worm. Um, and... Uh, uh, so birds and nature basically is my, um, I'm a naturalist as well as a scientist. So we will sometimes look at um, birds or thunderstorms or the moon or just the head end or the tail end. Um, but a lot of times we look at stuff in a scanning electron microscope and um, I'm going to give you a follow, and I recommend that everybody else that's here that doesn't know um, you also give you a follow, because I like ukulele, and um, I have some friends who play the ukulele. So um, there, I have some followed you while um, while I was streaming. There, now I won't forget. Um, sometimes people raid, and then like there's so much chaos around it that. Um, can't do anything and then I forget to to follow people so best if I just do it right away um, ambient sounds though that sounds really amazing um, is there a lunar eclipse coming up what if one day you zoom in and you saw if I zoomed in and I saw uh, radio Joe then um, that would be pretty spectacular oh this is the head end up here I can see it has little eyes. It's digging around in the sediments. It's looking for something to eat. Hang on a second, I'll zoom out so you can see its whole. Here's the worm. There's its eyes. You see it has little eyes? And uh, it's shoving its face. They mostly eat, uh, you know, they just chomp on whatever's in the sediment. They just eat all of it. Yeah, solid sediments. Exactly. Um, but I've got a lot of musician friends, Molly, so um, looking forward to hearing what you do. And if you're coming and you're bringing Chippy Flip with you, I know it's probably going to be good because Chippy Flip has good taste. He's uh, he's in a lot of streams where I am, so as well as being a streamer himself. So I know that he's going to only bring in good people to my stream. Hopefully I warned you in advance, we might be looking at little friends. So um, this is what's called an oligochete worm. I found
found you through Mind of a Snail, which I found through Chippy Flip. Yeah, Mind of a Snail is good friends of ours. So, um, and they stream, they'll stream tonight, right? I think they stream, unless they're on break again, stream on Sunday nights. So, um, and I was on their show uh, as well. I did a, a little cameo for one, one of their um, Sundays. And I, I think we looked at actual jam under the microscope. We jammed on the microscope while they jammed, while we jammed. All right, uh, Studio, we'll see you later. If you guys aren't following Studio Cornix and you like microscope streams, you might give her a follow. She's also just recently upgraded her camera system, so we're looking forward to seeing what she comes up with that. But Studio Cornix is an artist she, um, she does microscope stuff, and then she actually will stop and draw um, many of the algae that she sees and other organisms. And then um, she grows algae and has a, um, a pigment farm. She uses them to harvest the pigments and then paints with the pigments from the actual algae that she's drawn. So that combination is spectacular. And she does great work. So please give her a follow as well. Here's the head end of this little guy. Um, and I've also recently been doing well, uh, sort of on and off, I do some um, some woodworking streams. So I also make um, some instruments like shakers and not ukulele, but I could try. Um, kalimba. And I'm working also on a, a tongue drum, which is a a wooden tongue drum, not the metal kind. But all right, let's leave this worm alone for a little bit and go look around and see what else we can find. Yes, and I'm planning on making, I think my next ukulele will be for our friend Asymmetric Soul here. So um, also if you're not following Asymmetric Soul, Atrium Asymmetrical Soul, you might give him a follow. Um, I have a lot of musician friends, and, um, you know, they do great stuff. Here's another little worm. This is a nematode worm. This one's actually quite large. Uh, like that other one was kind of large as well. But let's zoom back out. Let's see what I can find. This, this giant nematode worm in here is just kind of slowly creeping around. There's a rotifer. I saw these other rotifers in here that were kind of cool. Actually, let's zoom in on this guy right here. Let's see if I got the water off of this yet. All right, it took us up a level of magnification. And anonymous cheer, cheered one bit. Thank you for that. Um, here you can sort of see uh, the cilia. You can see the top of it. It has a little set of cilia that is also spinning, similar to the way the rotifers was. Um, this is Vorticella, and the one behind it here is also Vorticella. Recognized by the fact that they live on a stalk. Um, they don't have to be on a stalk. They can um, detach themselves from the stalk. But um, the stock can actually contract. So <laughs> you got to head out for pizza. All right, Commander Shafard, we'll see you later. Thank you for hopping in and hanging out with us here while we looked at some stuff in the light microscope and tested out my new microphone. It's nice to see you. I'll probably see you around hitting things with a wrench or whatever it is that you're doing on uh, the video games you're playing. Thanks for dropping by. Um, it makes you happy when Twitch communities intermingle. Yeah, I feel like um, some some of my streaming communities, like I'm responsible for linking them together. Um, so I really like that as well. Like um, Peachops and uh, and Mind of a Snail. Like Peachops didn't know who Mind of a Snail was, and I was like a fan of both of them. And I was like, Peachops, you might want to check them out. And then next thing I know, they're like best friends. 
and they read each other constantly and so that was kind of cool and then there's some people that kind of link through open set um into my little networks and i have little artist networks as well that they kind of all link together and i feel like in some ways i'm kind of a little hub for those which i like uh, and then i've got a bunch of science streamer friends as well because obviously um, we do a lot of science here so wrenching and recycling yeah uh, are those like little fins or wings or more like little propellers? You found me through Curio Lab. Yeah, so that's another example. Curio Lab actually just came to us one time. Um, they saw some of my SEM images and, and checked out my stream. And then uh, they do really cool painting and music. So there's a, they're a good combination of things that I like. Um, but Fran came into the channel and was... Um, was checking out my SEM stuff and was like, oh, I really love the images and stuff, the color choices. And so um, I was actually on their season finale. They used some of our artwork. Um, so I also forgot I do some art. So, um, so the question is, are they little fins? Um, they're actually little hairs, uh, fossilized human. They are just like tiny little hairs that are attached that they are doing this with. They're basically just going like this back and forth with them. And um, when we first zoomed in on this one, it was going very slowly. You can see that it's ramped it up. And now it's going quite quickly um, around the outside edge. Hey, what are you doing? Hello. Hello? What are you creeping around in here for? So I decided to make it a bit different. Oh, you painted it. Yeah, with Posca Prize. You want me to show them? Yeah. Okay. My daughter Sylvia does a bunch of art, and she painted her her notebook cover here. It's a cloud journal. She's hiding around here behind me somewhere. Since we moved to the bubble, it's kind of hard for her to figure out where to stand in order to get into the field yeah. of view. There she is. Jazz hands. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Fossilized human says you did a great job. Um, thanks for the follow, Lord Zareno. Why wait around for a rainbow when you can just draw one? That's a good attitude uh, coming from... Uh, asymmetric there. I see there's a bunch of stuff moving over here, which means there's probably another worm. Or maybe it's just attached to the first worm. Oh no, there's another worm. This one's bigger than that one. Oh, you can see he's munching on stuff. Oh, hang on, let me zoom out. Oh. He disappeared. Took a couple of bites of that sediment and then just backed out. Hello? You want to make a decision and stop going back and forth? Just munching away on everything. Um, all right, let's go look around and see if we can find any more rotifers. There was a really cool rotifer that was like a very different one. Um, the ciliates that we were looking at that were bell-shaped, um, that were sitting on the end of the thing and spinning, like this one down here. here you can kind of see the uh, the hairs right there Let's see if I zoom in there you can see them it's like when I get close they start speeding up but uh, also sometimes their um, speed matches the frames per second and it looks like they're sitting still um much more negative in person molly related to diatoms community i think you might enjoy oh yeah yeah hannah rebecca so if you're not following our friend hannah you might give her a follow and also uh, my friend mel um who is here as well and she also plays the ukulele uh, as her primary instrument so ukulele and piano um so i think you'd like both of those and um, might be a good idea for her to have some uh, 
ukulele friends. So ukulele playing friends. Um, these things that are, let's look right here. So just for clarity, um, most people probably don't know what a diatom is unless you've been in the channel for a long time. If you're a regular, um, you're probably tired of hearing about them, but uh, diatoms are this thing right here. It's a type of algae. It makes the silica skeleton. And this one lives on a stalk. So it's actually extruding some stuff out of one side of its skeleton. So that's a single celled organism. It has a silica cell wall. And, um, and then on this end, it has sort of like a salt and pepper shaker thing called an apical pore field. And it exudes out this thing that it's using to live, to attach, to live on here. Orchestrian, hello, welcome back. You play piano, but you don't play ukulele. Um, how do I, yes, how do I keep doing shoutouts without typing? More Leorn, yes, I am a wizard with Leorn board, and um, I often stream with no, uh, no helpers to help me, so I have just built in tools for shouting people out without typing anything. One of them is buttons. So like we have Radio Joe in the channel, so I can just push a button and it'll shout Radio Joe out. Um, or, uh, so those are easy. And, um, <laughs> um, and then I have some that also will detect when someone comes in. Yes, there you go. You say hi and you get a shameless auto shout out. Perfectly, Dr. WD40, well done. Um, those are the other type of shout outs that I have. So I just put all the people who regularly visit who are streamers or friends of our channel like Dr. WD40 here um, into an array. And then my Leoran board checks when somebody chats if they're in the array. And then it reads from another part of a different variables array um, what their shout out is. So everybody gets their own unique shout out. And then um, uh, it does it, it once they've been shouted out once, it, it basically just has a little binary switch. It turns them off so they can't uh, constantly be shouted out every time they come into the channel or whatever, um, which is nice. It's nice because I don't have to type it. And um, the people who regularly come in can get a shout out, uh, you know, shameless as they like to be about it, it's fine. It's, yeah, it's easier for me. And I mean, um, and then all I got to do is update the array a little bit here and there. So um, actually, I like it a lot better than using. So I have a bunch of custom shout outs that I was doing through the, the bot, but end up making like a command for every person. But now I just do all of my shout outs through the Orin board. And so like if I do a shout out for somebody like just with the SO buttons, like if there's somebody who's in the database already, like Pacific Plankton, I can type it and it will read from that same uh, array, grab her shout out and then spit out a custom shout out for her, even though I just typed SO. So instead of doing just like the regular one, and if it's somebody who's not in the array, like um, Orchestran here, um, then they get the generic one. So, cause I don't know anything about, well, I mean, I know what she does, but, um, but because it's not in the, the array yet, then, um, you know, can't be updated. All right. So enough about Leoran board. Uh, is it silica skeleton like a glass shell? Yes. Fossilized human. That's exactly what it's like. It's a, um, it's actually opalin silica. So it's a uh, hydrated silica, but basically like, like a quartz. Um, and then, um, it's the cell wall. So, uh, it functions like, a basically like a, um, a skeleton, an exoskeleton for the organism, although um, they can stick things through it. So um, it doesn't, you know, they're not completely encapsulated in it. Like this thing that's coming out um, here, that's some sort of little bacteria. Um, this thing that's coming out here, you can see also this thing's being consumed by bacteria, um, is squeezed through the, the valve, through the, um, the cell wall. 
And sometimes we see uh, things radiating out from different parts of diatoms through the cell wall. So this one's living an attached lifestyle, but they can become detached. And these, these diatoms, this is gomphonema, actually can crawl around when they're detached. So um, some diatoms that we find will just be crawling around in the field of view. Um, that's a cyanobacteria. It's also crawling around a little bit. Um, uh, so sometimes we'll just find them crawling around in our field of view. Sometimes we'll see them living attached lifestyles, and sometimes they're plankton. So Let's go zoom around and look at some of these other things. So um, there's a whole bunch of algae in here, and then there's a bunch of also little uh, zooplankton of different types. Um, these ciliates are kind of interesting. So... Um, surrounding these little protozoa are tiny little hairs. I think you can make them out. I think they render here at, at 20x okay. Um, I could take it up to 40x, but you can see there's little hairs that are wrapping around the outside of this thing. Um, usually there's a single row or sometimes two rows of little hairs that they use for movement. And then um, this thing is also doing something with its cilia to create a current in the water around it. It's probably feeding. You could see the stuff gets sucked in and then, you know, sort of zoom through um, that organism. It's really small. Um, let's see if I can take it up to the next magnification and still keep it in the field of view. So um, when I increase the... Um, magnification and when I zoom in it'll be even bigger but I also need to make a slight adjustment on my end to go to 40x I need to match the, um, the objective down here in the bottom and um, let's zoom out a little so one of the things that happens, we can get closer to it so we can see a little bit better about what's going on in there, inside of it. Uh, but when you get really close, you also start to lose your depth of focus. So, um, you know, there's a, a trade-off in terms of how much of it you can see versus, um, sorry about that, I need to... Zoom out a little bit to fix, so my camera will fix its um, its optics. You can see the hairs a little bit better here, I think, than you could in that other field of view. Um, and also, probably if I increase the light, you probably could do a little bit better. You can kind of get a sense of the shape of it here. It's a weird shaped little guy, but there you can see kind of the things kicking around on the inside of it. And the little hair sticking off of it. Um, oh my goodness, science is raiding us. Uh, what's with all the raids tonight? Hello, Science Streams. Welcome in. Uh, thank you for the raid. Um, and welcome in, Science Stream Raiders. We are looking at some stuff in the light microscope. Um, if you're not following our friend Science Streams, you should give them a follow. They do science communication, and uh, it's a tag team. Um, two people, both with PhDs, um, talking about a wide range of topics. I think their their topics for the weekend this weekend was biodiversity, and then um, Belint also the um, one of the two team members there does a lot of his um, artwork. And I saw you were doing some art today. <laughs> Put away your picnic and hide the sugar. Um, you know, I worked really hard so that the ants couldn't get to my. Uh, uh, Oriole's jelly 
uh, I had to come up with a clever workaround because they were getting into the jelly um, for my Oriole feeder. Um, I made a, a Doctor Strange version of Antonia. So Antonia is one of his characters, uh, an ant, and uh, they dress them up in all kinds of different outfits of wide variety um, of costumes. So that's cool. Welcome in. Um, I'm, I'm sure that your stream went great. They always do. And um, we're just looking at some of these little weird critters from my pond. There's a bunch of these things. I don't know exactly what they are. Um, sometimes I'd spend a little time ahead of time, like trying to sort through my, uh, my samples and try to figure out what I'm looking at and then ID it a little bit because um, the protozoa are not my uh, forte, as people probably know, I study diatoms. And, um, uh, and the soft bodied stuff, the first thing I do with a sample when I'm going to analyze the diatoms is get rid of all the organic y stuff so I can look at the, the silica skeletons without having chloroplasts or anything else basically blocking my field of view. So zooplankton and their decaying bodies, if there are any in my samples, are usually the first thing to, to be extruded or extracted. Um, we put hydrogen peroxide or um, uh, nitric acid into the sample to try to get rid of organic matter. Uh-oh. That worm, there's a worm creeping over here. Hang on, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There's some vorticella. These ones, I know what they are. That other thing might be a detached vorticella. Um, sometimes when they detach, they just their shape changes a lot. And so it could be that. Here you can see their little cilia are spinning like mad. They're bell-shaped. They live on a stalk. If you zoom down, you can kind of see their stalks. And they can contract on the stalk. That's how you know that it's a vorticella. So these are regular denizens of my pond. We usually see them. And uh, tonight's sample is, of course, from my koi pond. We've been kind of like looking at it every Sunday now for a while. Um, I've been doing sort of an evening Sunday stream where we um, will take a look at what's whatever's living in my pond at the time. Here for cheese. You're very new here, but this is good content. Wow. Well, welcome in uh, here for cheese. We're happy to have you. You don't have to be um, someone who's been around for a while. I've been streaming here on Twitch for uh, about a year and a half, I guess. I do light microscope, SEM, bird, moon, storms, woodworking, art, photography, uh, a lot of stuff. So, um, but Sundays, for the last couple of weeks, I've been doing light microscope streams. And then um, during the week, last week, I did a bunch of SEM streams. And a couple of weeks ago, um, Science Streams and I tag teamed. And I don't know if you came in with their raid or if you're just here um, on your own, but um, he was in my, uh, my channel and we were talking about ants and I had ants on this scanning electron microscope that he'd sent me. So V likes thing. V likes thing. Oh, you like thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so if you're interested, the VOD for that is still up. Um, I keep all the VODs and, uh, and post them. You can see they, they can kind of tuck their little cilia, the things that they're spinning around there. You can see when they get disturbed, they'll, um, they'll contract a little bit. And then um, you'll also see that they pull the cilia in when they do that. And then when they basically become relaxed and go back to feeding, they'll put the cilia back out. So you can watch them kind of unfold like that and fold out their cilia and start to, to eat. So I love seeing invisible worlds. Microscopes and telescopes really give new perspective. Yeah. So <laughs> um, yeah, there you can see them unfold themselves basically and then start spinning those uh, things around. Yeah, they're pretty cool. 
Um, yes, yeah, so they have a stalk and they're attached to that thing in the background is Cladophora, I believe. It's a type of green algae. And it's just growing, it was growing on the side of my pond, the side of my koi pond. They have like a, you know, in order to keep the water in, it has like a vinyl kind of um, wrap that goes down the side walls and under the bottom. Um, and um, it's a good habitat for growing stuff. So that's all I'll say about that. I can come out there and sample it like all the time. And I just, when I get bored and want to look at stuff in the microscope, um, I'll just pull out a sample and um, there's always something cool in there. Earlier we were looking at these worms that are crawling around in the sample. Let me find some of those for you guys. Sorry, I'm going to play with the light a little bit and we'll go look for that worm. Oh, here it is. I didn't have to go far. There's a giant worm. Give you some perspective. That thing is just barely visible <laughs> um, with your naked eye. You'd be able to see it, but it would be tiny. And then there you can see its body. Yeah. Boo, are you trying to scare me? Okay. Um, so there's a big worm. That's can an oligarchy. Can you touch it? Where's the fluffy thing? The fluffy thing is in the bag right here. That's for outdoor streams. Sorry, that's my daughter. <laughs> um, the uh, type of worm here is an oligochete, which just means that chitae are the little hairs that make up their segmented bodies. They have um, these long skinny hairs right here. And the word oligo means low. So they just have a few hairs. They fall into this group called oligochete. If you watch my friend Pacific Plankton stream, she will um, occasionally show you something called a polychaete worm, which is a worm with many little hairs, uh, which is what that word means, many keet. Um, and then this is a nematode worm. This is a different type of worm right here that's squirming its way into our field of view. It doesn't have any segments in its body and it doesn't have any hairs. So they just look like a tube, uh, generally speaking. And you can see what they've been eating just like you can with this guy. Um, but they're fairly large um, relative to the rest of the things in our samples. And you can see um, if we focus in, in here, there you can kind of, it, it's a little disorienting, but you can see. What are you trying to do, Sylvia? Why do you want to get in here? Oh, don't punch things with my microscope cover. Sorry, microphone cover. There you can see the little hairs and just put it back on the, not anywhere it can get wet. Anywhere over there is fine. Here you can see into the inside of it, uh, the peristalsis as it used that to move and also to eat. So it kind of like contracts its body in waves. And um, these types of worms mostly just eat their way through the sediment and um, stuff that is nutritious for them gets consumed and stuff that isn't just uh, just gets uh, just passes through let's put it that way so um, not everything gets consumed that it eats so they just eat their way basically through detritus and um, regularly find them oh here's another one it's a different one you can tell that's the head end because it's got um, I can focus on it. You can see its eyes. Those dark spots are eyes. So multicellular organism, not a single celled organism. And you can see it's just kind of rooting. It's eating. It's rooting its way around in the sample. It's eating that stuff. So you can see it kind of trying to pull stuff into its its mouth and chomp on it, basically. So it's, it's eating this sort of dislodged debris that's sitting here. So yeah, they're... they're um, this is their normal behavior. They just kind of chomp around inside of this stuff. There's a whole bunch of these vorticella up here. They look really pretty. Let's zoom in on that. Here you can see that it's unfolding again. There they go. Really pretty. And there's a whole bunch of them here. Let's see if I jump back out and I think I can 
Oops, wrong button. Uh, this. Sorry, I'm just playing with the settings a little bit. Um, do they have eyes like we think of, or are they just light sensing cells? They're basically, just light sensing cells. Most of the really simple organisms like these. They don't have complex eyes. Um, they just use them to tell, basically, are they close to the shore or near the surface. So they're usually just giving them some sense of brightness. Um, you know, they're, they're basically pigmented parts of their body that um, provide them some information about the light. So they're definitely not um, comparable to our eyes where they actually can see well. There you can see the little stalk that they use to attach. So, um, as I mentioned, Vorticella, we saw some kind of contracting, but um, here you can see this little cable, basically, that they have that they're connected to, um, that's connected to this algae. And um, when they're disturbed, this thing, they can pull back on it. They can contract. So if something bumps into it and it doesn't like it, they will contract. And there's other things that look very similar to Vorticella that can't do the contraction thing. Um, the other things, those are called epistylus. And then um, these ones live attached in a single set. So like for each organism, there's one cord that goes back. Um, there's another thing that, um, there's another option for things that live attached where the colony basically all lives attached together and they can all contract it. Uh, um, like a tree, like a like a tree that basically contracts, so everything is connected to everything else. So, um, are you looking for anything specific, or are you just browsing? I asked, like I'm working retail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're just browsing. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't want to buy anything just yet, um, but I will contact you if we do. Um, these are Vorticella. They're not rotifers. Um, you know, there's a lot of microscopic organisms. Rotifers are just one type. Um, let's go see if we can find some rotifers. We saw some before the raid came in, um, and we got a couple of um, we got a couple of raids. So, drone hands, hello, and um, uh, it's a shout out for our friend drone hands. Um, they're a music streamer and um, they do electronic music. And I think they're still working on your album. I think you're still working on on your album um, uh, here on Twitch, so you can catch them. I do a lot of late night streaming. I see them on very late sometimes. Um, if I zoom in, you can see a lot of the details of the organism. As I mentioned, they're kind of bell shaped. They have this attached. Um, connection that goes back to the cladophora and um, and you're right they wave these things around and they basically pull the current towards their face which basically allows them to filter feed and you can see stuff being pulled towards their face right here right if I focus right here you can kind of see that stuff is being pulled towards their face constantly um, so there that one got hit it hit itself with something um, but you can see that they um, you can see them unfold, um, but that they will um, create a current. So you can see the current, that stuff that's swirling around is not moving on its own. It's moving by the fact that they're waving their little cilia around. And then occasionally something delicious ends up going into their mouth. So, um, Trying to see, let's see, would you like an extended warranty on your diet? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Chippy Flip. All right, let's look around and see if I can find us. Um, so you can see some stuff caught in the current. Look at the stuff in here, right here. It's stuck in the middle of all the currents and it's just spinning around in a circle. It's like trapped in a vortex from the vorticella. 
Okay, let's. I'm gonna zoom out. Um, that's 20. That's 10. So we're way back out. Um, so it's actually 100 times magnification. And I'm gonna play with the light settings again. There you can see they got hit and then they all contracted at once. We come back in here and we can look at this. You can see all the stuff swirling around their faces as they um, try to filter feed. And then there's a bunch of these. They are all over the place in here. There's our worms. Um, let's see if I can find us a rotifer. So the rotifers are um, similar in structure. They have actually a really similar shape, except for they have a foot um, with little toes that they can use to grab onto stuff. But these things right here, see this little guy spinning? That's a vorticella that's disconnected from its stalk. So it's just spinning around in a circle. It's actually, it's a vorticella. It's actually just disconnected itself from something and it will grow a new stalk and attach itself to something uh, in the other direction. It attaches first, then grows the stalk, but it's just spinning around. We were looking at it before. I was trying to figure out what it was, but it's actually their detached vorticellas. And um, so they eat bacteria and anything that's small and will fit into their mouths, basically. That's a pattern for a lot of organisms. Um, that's really pretty. Look, there's a whole bunch of them right here. Um, that's a pretty normal pattern for microscopic organisms uh, that they will, if it fits in their mouth, they eat it basically. Fish are the same way. Um, you know, like when fish are little, they eat little things. And when they get bigger, they start eating bigger things. There's a nematode worm. I think. Yeah, I think it's a nematode worm. It's creeping around right there. All right, let's zoom back out so you can follow where I am. Picture doesn't look great. Oh, there's a um, Euploides. It's a little, another little ciliate in there. A couple of them. And these are loose vorticella. There's a big old worm. There's a bunch of worms in these sample. Um, I saw a couple of different rotifers. Worm. When we were looking around, they wouldn't sit still. They were just um, detaching their little feet every time I would get kind of in focus. Oh, while I'm here, these little things that you see that are in the background, um, these things here look like little spiny things. That's a type of green algae called Cynodesmus. And they live in colonies, um, and they either have uh, they'll live by themselves, but they more commonly live in colonies of two, four, or eight. And they adjust the length of the colony based on the chemicals that are going on in the water around them. They can they can detect whether a bunch of Cynodesmus have been eaten, and if they if they have a bunch of their friends that have been eaten, they will make their colonies longer. And they can tell, like, uh, somebody's been eating a lot of Cynodesmus. They change their behavior, and they make their colonies longer, so it's harder to eat them. The longer they are, the less likely they are to fit into something's mouth. And so that's really their, their strategy for a defense against things like fish or zooplankton, is to, um, to make themselves longer. Um, as a as a means to make themselves less edible. Here's a little rotifer. So rotifers a little bit bigger than a vorticella, and then um, they have different body parts. So they have a similar shaped head um, that they can fold little cilia out on in here. Um, and if we sit still and it decides it's comfortable, it might start to filter feed where you can see the Rona come out and it has a little thing called an antenna sticking out here and there's its leg and it has a foot well they call this the foot it has little three little toes that are at the base of this yeah it'll just unfurl um, out of its head here a set of what look like vacuum cleaner bristles and then it'll start swirling them around and use those to um, to try to um, filter feed the same way 
me see if I can get this into focus at the scale so we can actually get a little bit better image of it. There. There's its antenna. The antenna is basically like a chemical sensor. It's looking to see, do I want to be here? Or do I want to move? And is there enough food around me or not to start to filter feed? So you can see that little, like just a single piece sticking up there above its head. And then um, the mouth is the part that's basically sticking out in the front. It has little tiny cilia on it. Um, uh, Grace Lauren, can I ask where the sample came from? It came from about um, 10 feet from me. I have a koi pond in my backyard and um, this was growing along the sidewall. So um, this is just a, a bit of um, a little bit of a sample from my koi pond. Just I scraped some of the algae that was growing on the side um, into a bowl, a little bowl, and uh, and brought it in. So, yeah, like a foot tail. That's a good way of describing it. Yeah, and they are, I think if they were bigger, they would be terrifying. Like if there was something that could just sit in a room with you and uh, and start spinning parts of its body and suck you into it, I think you probably would have a pretty crazy... Uh, dislike for whatever that was and, um, <laughs> and it would be terrifying so uh, let's go see if I can find another one that one's kind of stuck inside of a bunch of stuff it's very frustrating because it is not trying to eat it's a whole colony of oh, there's a little euploides get this to sit still long enough to take a look at it. So kind of like a little paramecium in a way. And they um, have these stiffened cilia that they can kind of walk around with. Um, this one's also using it to pull food towards its face. You sometimes see them use the sort of longer, stiffer cilia to walk around with. Um, they're very quick, so when they're sitting still, this is nice, but you can see it's pulling stuff <laughs> it hit itself in the face with an algae and scared itself and ran. There you go. Uh, typical. Typical. That's the, uh, the way that they behave. A lot of times they get hit in the face with something and they react by going, what was that? Uh, even if it's something that they pulled towards their face. So there's a little baby worm. That one's, um, that's its whole length right there, so it's not much. I wish I had a big feeder to pull stuff into my face. Yes, yes, yes. If you could just like inhale your chips, sit on the, uh, the couch, and um, just like spin something that pulled the chips into your face so you didn't have to move at all. Oh, there's the other rotifer. It's a different type of rotifer. That one is really pretty. Okay, let's... There you can see it's little corona are out, it's spinning them. It's a little disorienting. Um, occasionally you'll see little red dots behind the um the corona right here there's you can sort of see it that's an eye they usually have i think they usually have two um, but these red spots are eyes just like the worm has these really simple eyes and then here you can see this one's got a more complicated set of corona it's got a big one that goes around the outside and then it's got these little ones uh, it looks like maybe there's three of them because I keep seeing, yeah, one, two, and three. So there's two on the bottom end and then one that's sort of right around the upper part of its head right there. And then there's the antenna, still the same pieces that we saw. And the mastax is this part in here that is using, it's like jaws inside of its throat, basically. Um, it uses to chomp on the food and then that's its stomach right there. So whatever it's eating gets pulled in 
and it's um, pulled through its body. And let's zoom back out a little bit. You can see this one is uh, similarly attached. Let's take a look at its little, while we can, while it's sitting here. Let's take a look at its little foot. So it's, it's attached by its foot tail thing. And then those are little toes. So they usually have two or three little toes that they can use to grab onto something. And I think in this case, it's actually grabbed onto the cover slip because it doesn't seem to be anything around it. So I think it's actually just using the cover slip as its base. And um, and it's just, uh, it has attached itself to it. And you can see how well it can pull stuff, right? Like from all over the place. Um, and the shape of this thing is a little bit different than the shape of the other ones. This one just is sort of like a big, I don't know, it's shaped like a watermelon seed or something. Um, and I think this is the first year, last year when I was looking through the pond and years before when I looked through the pond, I just saw the other type of rotifer. I didn't usually see these types. So um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited when I find them. They're a little less common in the pond and um, you don't find these things outside of the water, but it looks like kind of scaly in here, which I think is also pretty cool. Like this whole thing in here is kind of scaly looking. Um, Pretty neat like a pitcher yeah with a big old tummy yeah it's a, a and it just is you can see how effective it is at pulling stuff from like way way from way far oh, i think it just ate that green thing i think something just went through yep there's another one it just pulled another little green i don't know what those little green things are probably some green algae chlorella maybe um, but occasionally you'll see one go in like that and then uh, sometimes they'll escape, like they'll get caught up in the little things and get fired out, but some of them actually go into their mouth. So some of those particles you see come in and then they just disappear because it's getting, it's, it's being digested. So it's being effective at eating stuff. So, um, the little compartmentalized blobs in their body are those organelles? Yes. So, um, this, so yeah, so there's, uh, you know, it's a it's an animal. So this is its jaw. Here's its eye. There's a stomach. Somewhere in here is a heart-like structure, similar to a heart-like structure. Um, you know, they have really simple bodies, like just like a sack, basically. Um, but you know, yeah, you can if you just Google like rotifer organs or whatever, you'll see diagrams where they show it. So. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. It's just like chomp, 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 chomp. And uh, definitely. What is this thing not zoomed in? It's a rotifer. Um, it's a type of animal uh, that lives in the water. Uh, if you want to know what the scale is looking like, like if you're confused by like how big that is, um, I do have a scale that would show us that. That's um, a one tenth of a millimeter, or if you'd like, that's a hundred microns right there. And um, I can set it to move around. So, like maybe you could have three of these in a millimeter, something like that. Three, two or three of these in a millimeter. Um, in terms of size, so pretty small. Um, in the scanning electron microscope, when we're looking at stuff in the scanning electron microscope, um, we usually find stuff that's uh, about a tenth of this. <laughs> so um, ten, in between sort of 10 microns and 100 microns. Um, so this might be the biggest, some of the biggest things we see in the scanning electron microscope often. Um, And sometimes you can see their uh, you can see their eggs in, inside of them as well. And we saw a rotifer before earlier today that had an egg in it. I'm not sure if that's what these things on the sides are or not. Um, I'm not familiar with this rotifer very well, but um, most rotifer are female. The deloid rotifer, which is the type that's not this one, uh, was the type that we saw before um, that have the long antenna and their their body's a little bit more worm-like. Um, 
those have been female, for, uh, only female for, um, for some species, it's 10 million years of, uh, of asexual reproduction of only females have been um, born. And for some, it's 75 million years. So somewhere in the range of 10 to 75 million years, they've been basically just um, producing females and no male. Um, the female will lay an egg, which is basically a clone of itself. And then it'll just keep laying eggs and making clones of itself. So pretty cool. Um, uh, have I ever looked at the things that uh, live on our skin? You're both curious and terrified. We have, um, we have tried. So there are things called demodex uh, mites that live you know, basically at the cuticles of some of your hairs, especially your eyelashes and eyebrows. And not everybody has them. Um, so yeah, the eyelash mites. We tried it, uh, Roxanne. I actually pulled a bunch of my eyelashes out and some of my eyebrows out. And then um, like everyone in the lab tried it and we couldn't find any. Um, they become, yeah, they have discerning tastes. You're right. Uh, I don't taste very good, apparently, but they um, they become more common the older you get. Like once you get infected with them, basically, you're more likely to have them. So um, it could be that we just sampled young people mostly. Um, but uh, we tried also, we tried to get some of the old professors in the, in the department, some of the people that were like, you know, 70. Um, we asked them for some eyelash and eyebrow hair so that we could see, and then we couldn't find any on theirs either. So we tried looking at them in the light microscope. We tried looking at them in the scanning electron microscope. So I haven't been very effective finding those mites. Um, I don't know if they, um, if they just don't like people from Indiana or if it just so happens. Uh oh, look at this. Hello. That worm is like, is this where the camera is? Doopy doop doop. Just gonna stick himself right in the field of view. There you can see they can kind of contract a little bit from the top view. That's kind of nice. Their head's sort of like like a snake head, you know, this one. Um, uh, thanks for all the follows, guys. I, I haven't been uh, saying anything about it, but um, Marcos Baina and 217 Bill and Grace Lauren and Here for Cheese and Crystal Rock 88, uh, Lord Zareno, and uh, Ken Copen, and Tagoshi Naruta. Um, thank all you guys for the follow. And I also got a follow from Trademark 2200. Um, thank you guys for all the follows. Um, I think we're closing in on 2900. Four away from uh, if you're into numbers. Um, Let's see, I wonder if the temperature or climate has anything to do with it. It could be, it could be. You know, there's lots of organisms that maybe don't like certain temperatures or would prefer certain temperatures. Um, so that's a pretty neat little rotifer though. What do you got? Are you watching my stream? No, I'm filming a video. Oh, you're filming a video? Yeah. Would it help if the lights were on in here? Maybe. maybe. This is my random video. It got dark in here. Do random things. Do you? I think there's another little rotifer right here. Okay. Thanks for the updates. There's another little rotifer. This one's a uh, deloid rotifer, and you can tell the difference between them pretty easily. You can see this one's got, that's my daughter. Um, Roxanne Droid, Bye Cat Girl, and Random Shoes, you guys are like, you're right up at the edge. Push me right up to the edge. We're at 28.99. That's how close we are to flipping over. Um, <laughs> yeah, my daughter sometimes streams with me. Um, sometimes she uh, does drawing either while I'm streaming or um, in place of me streaming. It will just be her drawing and me hanging out in her with her. And sometimes she does Minecraft uh, and we do, or she plays little video games and we hang out. Um, so I like to keep my streams mostly family friendly in case my daughter wants to join in or, uh, or team up with me. Um, and, uh, 
I think there's the mastex for this. You can see that it's eating with, and then here are the, the corona pieces that it pulled out of its head and has been spinning around. And um, its body's down here. It's like a sack, and then it's got like a little foot with the toes, and it's connected to it, but you can see this one is feeding. So um, one of yours is watching with you too. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, yeah, this is pretty cool, and they're fun to watch. Um, I feel like a lot of times I could just sit here and like rotifers and amoeba are the two things that I could just kind of sit and watch all day. Like I never get bored with watching an amoeba just crawl around and find food and consume stuff. Um, but the rotifers are actually, you know, they got a lot more energy. So Brendan, that would be terrifying if it was a few thousand times bigger. Yes, it would. Uh, yeah, yeah, this thing down here, the mastax, is just chomp, 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 because stuff keeps coming in. Whether we see it or not, stuff is coming in, and it, and it just starts chomping on it. So you know that this is slowly filling up. Um, oh, there's that worm again. It is very interested in whatever we're looking at all the time. Oh, there's another little. That was a, uh, oh, you'll be able to see this thing unfurl now. That was cool. Oh, there's another worm. There, you yep, just smacked him. Just butt itself right in. It's like, didn't you want to see a worm right now? That's right. It's like, look at all the cool stuff I can do. That rotifer probably found someplace else to go. It's probably had enough of that. It's probably seen just enough. To, oh no, it's still there, it's just getting run over. <laughs> It's just, this is getting pushed around by the worm. Yeah, there's like two worms. There's one here and there's one there. They're surrounding us. All right, let's go look around. Let's go look around for something that's not being harassed by worms. <laughs> let's see if we can find anything else. Um, I haven't done a microscope stream in a while, so I just thought I would spend a little bit of time looking around. Um, I like to just occasionally kind of leaf around and see how things might have changed in my koi pond. Occasionally. There you can see that when they detach, the vorticella detach themselves. Um, they can swim around very easily using the cilia. They can basically just spin them. There's another worm. There's so many worms in the sample, it's like disturbing. They're just, they're just knocking everything around. Um, this one's detached too, so there's a little, that's a little detached vorticella. I think it's, oh, maybe it is attached. It's just attached in the other dimension we can't see very easily, but we're looking straight down on a vorticella right there. And let's see if we can find anything else in here hiding around. Um, I wasn't planning on doing like a super long stream. I just sort of wanted to test out my new microphone. Uh, and then we got raided and we got raided again. So here I am. Um, but uh, welcome in everybody, and thank you for all the follows. It's nice. Um, like I said, I do kind of a really wide range of things. Um, almost all of it is nature stuff. So, Diatoms, hello. Hey, if you're um, if you like what you see here, and you'd like to see some more microscope stream, um, our friend Diatoms is here, and. Uh, it sounds good. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I like the way that the new microphone, I'm going to have to go back and listen to it, but I uh, I was recording it a little bit um, just to sort of see what it sounded like, and it seemed like it was it was a pretty big upgrade. Um, the new microphone's in part so that I can sound a little bit better when I'm talking, but also I think it'll be better for the outdoor streaming stuff where I'm looking at birds or whatever, because um, I feel like we'll be able to catch a lot more of the sound and then also in the scanning electron microscope streams, I'll be able to um, I'll be able to cut out some of the um, the pump noise a little bit better, I think. So we're just cruising around, trying to finish up what we have here in our sample. See if there's anything in here that I missed. Uh, I think we caught most of the big things, which are these giant worms, some vorticella two different types of rotifers, and uh, some euploides, a bunch of diatoms. It's 
pretty much what we usually find. I haven't seen a big transition recently. Some of these four to sell out. There we go. I love it when they all grow together like this. I think it's really they're like a little community of really pretty little Vorticella. Yeah, there are, there's a lot of them because this is just a sample where, you know, the Clodophora is growing on the side of my koi pond. And then we've got um, little Vorticella everywhere, basically, as a result. Are you getting ready to stream, Diatoms? If so, I can just bring people right over there. If you get yourself set up soon enough. Unless Studio is on. I can also check to see if she started streaming yet. I think she was planning on streaming today. I don't see her. Not until 8 p.m. Well, it is 8 p.m. here. <laughs> Um, our friend Diatoms is also a microscope streamer here on Twitch. I've got a really nice uh, camera set up. Um, and despite the name, they mostly actually know a lot of, um, they know a lot more of the uh, ciliates and the protozoa, and, and actually a lot more about them than I do, actually. Um, and, and they like to go to these really nasty looking sites and collect really nasty samples because they're all full of really cool ciliates. Um, whereas I just collect whatever is convenient for me, uh, like the sample that was basically from my backyard. So I um, highly recommend that you go check them out. And there's a link right there. Um, when he came in and, and chatted, he got auto shouted out by my, my code. My code found him and shouted him out. So I uh, highly recommend that you go give him a follow as well. And especially since we're kind of winding down. Um, and then he'll be back on today uh, at uh, 8 o'clock Pacific time. So, you know, you can take a break, eat your dinner, and then come back and check out his stream. I think you really would like it, uh, especially if you liked this. And... Um, uh, sometimes because they're on the coast, they can also look at marine samples, which I can't do here in Indiana. So um, that's also pretty nice. And I actually feel like there's a really nice, um, that's a detached Vorticella right there. Um, there's a really nice sort of uh, complement of people that are, um, that are streaming with microscopes and um, I have a list of them right here. So there's a whole list of people that are really good microscope streamers to catch. Everybody does their own sort of interesting components of those. Um, I mostly am a specialist in diatoms, which we aren't really talking about or looking at much today, although we did look at some gonfanema. Um, and then Studio Cornix is a specialist in algae. So she's, she knows the algae, especially the not diatom algae. And Del Maximum, um, he occasionally collects hydra. He knows a lot about hydra. Pacific Plankton is like our marine uh, microscopist. She's almost always collects marine samples. And uh, she knows all about the worms and the zooplankton and really most of the plankton from the marine realm. And um, diatoms here. Uh, as I mentioned, is kind of a ciliate specialist. He knows all the really rare ciliates pretty well, and um, or learns them sometimes um, on stream. And then Michael Learning studies mushrooms. Uh, Jolkson uh, kind of just knows a little bit of everything, um, but also does microscope streaming. Volcano Doc usually looks at minerals, and a bunch of you probably came in with science streams, so you're familiar with them, but they spend a lot of their time on microscope looking at things like amber, and um, ancient um, ancient materials like with insects in them, and also they look at a lot of um, ants and stuff in the in the stereo microscope. 
uh, and in the transmitted light microscope. Um, our friend Glorgana and Freckled Science, I think Freckled Science was on when I started, um, and Glorgana both look at insects a lot of times in the microscope, and Glorgana and Freckled Science both do like insect pinning. And then our friend Cyanophyte. So all of these people, I recommend that you um, consider giving them a follow and uh, just add them to your list of uh, streamers that you track if you're interested in microscope stuff. Um, I highly recommend all of them. Very friendly people, um, knowledgeable. Um, not all of them are, uh, are scientists. Some of them are just naturalists. Um, and I think that, that uh, you can learn a lot from naturalists. So um, definitely worth checking out. All right. Um, there's a bunch of diatoms here. These are all Gomphonema. This is Gomphonema johnsoni. Um, it's like my, every year my koi pond is just like a mono, monotypic colony of Gomphonema johnsoni. We see it in there basically just all the time. We've looked at some of these in the scanning electron microscope in an old stream, put some of my koi sample, koi pond samples up there. Let's see, today diatoms is going to be looking at some beach tide pond samples. That sounds really cool. There's a, uh, Every time I stop, there's a worm that butts in. There's a worm butting in. It's another Ligakeet worm. Just zooming by, body full of things wiggling through. Um, okay, I think that's probably what we're doing for a stream now. Um, I think the microphone's working well. And we got all the way through the sample. I could probably dig out another sample, um, but I feel like, you know, I don't know, I've been streaming for an hour and a half. That's a good time for me to to call it um, because I wasn't planning on doing a big long stream and I probably can't stream long enough to um, stick around until uh, diatoms actually starts but I will be in diatom stream if I can handle it if I can uh, make time for it we'll um, we'll definitely hop in and see what they're up to so um, we got a couple of really awesome raids um, from a variety of different people today so I'm gonna put this up here Maybe not birds, maybe uh, the diatom one. And uh, we got these followers that came in, uh, Random Shoes, By Cat Girl, Rock's Android, uh, 217 Bill, and uh, some random cheers. Uh, Commander Shafard was in here for a little bit with us hanging out. And um, some more here for cheese, Grace Lauren, Marco, Marcos Bina, uh, Rista Rock 88, Lord Zareno, Kenko Pin, Pinky Blue, there's more, uh, <laughs> Tagoshi, Trademark, and Dory Moth. There's all of our followers for today. Um, yeah, thanks for hanging out here for cheese. Oh, uh, glad you guys could make it. And Elfta, thank you for using the follower emote there. Uh, this is your idea of a perfect stream. Well, um, hopefully you like birds, uh, thunderstorms, the moon, uh, or scanning electron microscopy or woodworking, because those also sometimes show up in my streams. And um, Sundays, I've kind of been sneaking in with a little bit of light microscope time. Um, next week will probably be mostly SEM, maybe a little woodworking and um, birding probably so yeah nature stuff is kind of like where i am most of the time um and because uh Daya toms has been streaming from his light microscope um i kind of wanted to like lay back a little bit from my microscope streaming to make sure everybody kind of focuses a bit on his um so i haven't been doing much of microscope streaming for a little while but um yeah i like to throw it in now and then right get a little bit of that in um Let's see, so to end our stream, we should go raid somebody. Um, there's lots of choices out there for people we could raid, but um, since uh, some people came into the channel early on and uh, they came through a um, music streamer, and um, I'd like to go chase down some music streamer on the other end of this that we um, came from together. So, um, Let's see, we will raid Peachops. Um, our friend Peachops is a musician and they do like uh, uh, crazy video, uh, like 70s 
psychedelic kind of stuff. And um, so that's not your bag. That's okay. You don't have to come along. Um, it's really ambient a lot of times and um, really cool visuals. And um, yeah, the town is big enough for both of us. I just like to like, you know, kind of do my best to promote that you're doing something that's pretty unique. And I have a lot of other things I can do. So I just do those. Um, but, you know, if we can work together, that's the best. All right. So um, thanks for all the follows and for hanging out with me. And um, and we're going to go raid my friend Peachops, who's been following our channel since almost the very beginning and um, was part of the reason why um, our raiders, basically, who came in. Let's see, we got raids from Science Streams and we got a raid from Molly Laley. And Molly Laley knows me from uh, from some music streamers that we met through Peachops. So I thought it'd be a good idea to send you off to Peachops. So that'll be good. All right. Um, thanks, everybody. And um, we'll, we'll just go run out and raid now. Um, we'll probably stream again tomorrow sometime during the day.